Outdoor climbing environments are unpredictable. Here's what I carry on my harness to help keep me self-sufficient and to help me deal with many different eventualities. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. The protection you take with you on a climb, the nuts, cams, snow pickets, and the like, are always dependent upon your location, to where we're obstructed, yeah. route choice, and current conditions. But there are a few things I always have with me. Today, we're ignoring the route specific protection, and instead I'm talking about how I put together a versatile rack of personal equipment and some of the reasons I have for keeping each piece with me. Let's start with this quad length sling. It's 240 centimeters. This is mostly for anchor material. Given my little guys love rock climbing, I probably use this most as a top rope anchor, but I also use it for trad climbing and as anchor material over natural protection. Next is my 120 centimeter sling. I use this most frequently as a personal anchor system to clip myself in, being sure to stay under my anchor to avoid factor two falls on it. Next most, it becomes the extension of my rappel to help keep me upright when I have a heavy pack on. I can also use it as additional anchor material and as a foot loop for ascending the rope or as an aider for an impromptu aid climbing setup. I carry a separate personal quick draw. I use this to take rests on lead, to adjust my personal anchor if needed, and as part of a quasi daisy chain setup for that impromptu aid climbing. Next is a hollow block. This helps as a rappel backup for rope management on a glacier anytime I need a friction hitch. It is also a part of that makeshift daisy chain. Moving from soft goods to hardware, first comes the micro traction. This is invaluable to any hauling setup for either gear hauls or as part of a crevasse rescue. It's a part of my rope ascending setup and even has been recently cleared for use as a belay device. Although with the teeth on your rope, I try to only use it from the top and only when I don't have other safe options. I have a tib lock for things like crevasse rescue that demands speed or for when I'm going through my soft goods for other uses like when rescuing a climber to bring down a wall. Of course, I have my belay device for repelling and for belaying. I prefer a double strand option that has a guide mode to belay from the top. Then I have an extra locking carabiner. Normally this is here as part of the guide mode setup, but it's important to me that it's a large HMS so that I can belay and repel on a munter should I lend out or lose my belay device. And it's important that it's the same size as the carabiner on my belay device because that allows me to flip my belay device on my harness and orient it for progress capture when rope ascending, should my micro traction get lost or damaged. Finally, I have an extra wire gate carabiner. Mostly that's there to hang my gloves, but it's also there for making extensions or as a replacement to a Fifi hook on that impromptu aid sequence. So there's what and why I have added some particular pieces as personal equipment on my climbing rack. This setup helps me be flexible and self-sufficient on climbs ranging from top rope to lead climbing, from alpine rock to glacier travel, from aid climbing to rescue scenarios. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button to help us get this video out to a wider audience. Please ring that bell and subscribe, and you can check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. What are some of the steps you take, gear, education, or otherwise, to help you stay self-reliant in the outdoors? Tell us about it in the comments. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.